gentlemen, I have something very exciting for you. Brand new, just unwrapped Cyberpunk 2077, The Art Of. I am so freaking stoked about this. I've only had a very quick overview of it, but I really, I thought it would be cool this time to do it a little differently and give you a bit of a first impressions. There's so much to know about this game. I've only seen a few behind the scenes gameplay trailers and stuff like that. It looks gorgeous. Um, and I've got a little bit of a taste of the gameplay, but I don't know anything about the lore, the backstory, anything like that. So I'm gonna be reading over that in the next little while, but I, I'm actually tempted to do possibly a follow-up review of this book after I've had a chance to play the game. So that might come in some time, but this is more of a first impressions. And I'm just giving you a bit of a teaser of this because holy smokes, if you thought you were excited about playing this game to date, just you wait. I'm so excited, I literally built a brand new PC, <laughs> uh, which I can give you a full tour of and everything like that. Yes, RGB puke, I get it, the whole bit. But um, I built a new PC exactly for that. I'm just waiting for the bloody, uh, my RTX 3080 to eventually become available once the scalpers have their way for it. They just had this a couple of days ago. They had their garbage launch, their paper launch essentially. So yeah, so let's break this open. And the first thing you're gonna notice about this book is that it's, it's very dark. Okay, now that was a very bad joke. Let's skip ahead, I'm sorry. One of the things you're gonna notice about this book right out of the gate is the fact that despite the unfathomable scope of this game, they've still put so much attention into the quality of the execution of the art. My only concern for all of you wonderful, wonderful people at CD Projekt Red is I hope you are you are maintaining a sustainable tempo with your work because I can't imagine how something of this incredible scope and quality and polish at the, end time, at, the, at, at the same time that you're not actually burning yourselves out severely in the process of doing this. I mean, what you accomplished with Witcher 3 and now what you're accomplishing with, CD, with, with Cyberpunk 27 is literally raising the bar about 75% above the best of what we've seen. One of the things that I noticed right out of the gate, and this is something that's very reminiscent of, of uh, um, Big Hero 6 and uh, Blade Runner 2049, which I just reviewed a couple of weeks ago, you can check it out right here, is graphic design. They're building a city. So the, from a visual perspective, developing the font, the advertisements, the, the kind of style choices for buildings and ads and the visuals you're gonna see all the time is humongous for the immersiveness and believability of this. And they've gone to great lengths here. You're gonna see how they actually have live advertisements. And another thing is, because I was already in kind of Blade Runner mode when I first started reading this, um, one of the things that hit me, particularly on this page, is I'm noticing right off the bat how uh, CD Projekt Red are taking a lot of artistic license or a little bit of tasteful artistic license in the way that they design these this future. And for instance, how they've stylized and created these, these kind of like, quote, ink blot clouds, which I think is a very cool design choice and it works. Now here's a lot of use of photo bashing, but look at the polish that goes into this photo bashing. There's, there's nicely painted over with these nice, uh, these nice fashion designs and the lighting is very nice and consistent. This beautiful kind of hazy, polluted, busy, modern city type of vibe to it. Really cool stuff. Here we get, it's actually, it's funny, I was with my students just this morning, I was talking about one of my favorite lighting, real life lighting situations that's very rare. And it was, um, you know when you have dark, dark clouds, but the sun is late in the sky, so it's like 4 or 5 p.m. and the light's coming in from a bit of a, a direction. So you get a dark sky like this with brightly, warmly lit subjects like trees and buildings. And it creates this beautiful contrast and this glowy light that I find very pretty. Well, they've captured that here really nicely. This page here, it's like I'm only freaking five pages in and I'm already, I'm already shooting my mouth off is that where I really got my first glimpse of the scope, the grandeur of this. And one of the things I have to hand down to CD Projekt Red. I remember one of the art subjects that I love to paint a lot is mythological creatures, folklorish creatures and stuff like that. And um, I remember researching them and then I, I like to shortlist, I like to make like little lists and stuff like that of the paintings I'd like to work on and a little bit of a backstory that goes into it, kind of stuff you see me paint all the time. And I remember researching different like forest creatures and stuff like that and I made a list of about 15. 
the ones that I found were the most interesting. And I realized after that, that at least 10 to 12 of those creature designs, that those creatures that I thought were real creatures from real folklore that I'd shortlisted were actually from Witcher 3. That they had actually created a, and I research a lot of this stuff, they actually created lore, mythological creatures that were so researched and believable, I thought they were real. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if, let's say 30, 40 years ahead in the future, people start to misinterpret Witcher 3 lore as being true lore <laughs> because it was so well done. But it's the grandeur, the thought, and the writing that goes into developing these things in such a... In a way that's not said, but felt. One of the exact same reasons why I love Miyazaki's work, uh, like the Soul series, is that he put so much... There's so much not said, but implied in the design that, that YouTubers like, for instance, Vatividia, can continue years after the games have been released to continue to speculate on existing lore based on these little bits of evidence some nice advertisements over here. I think that's really cool. I'm also curious, I don't know the backstory behind it. You can let me know in the comments below if you know why. A lot of people have these very, uh, these scars. I guess maybe it's prosthetics or something like implants. I know that they have implants and stuff like that, like chips and stuff. So maybe this has something to do with implants. I know that there's a lot of like cybernetic arms and that kind of thing that they have, which is really cool. You're gonna see in a bit. Beautiful use of atmosphere. Again, something I've spoken about in other, you know, games like uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. You can check it over here or, uh, you know, or Blade Runner, all these different games, is the importance of atmosphere. We very often create these very sterile, clean kind of environments and there's no life, there's no grit, there's no action, there's no, there's no soul to the artwork because there's nothing, there's no energy propelling what it is that you're seeing. So the fact that they have this smog and humidity and fog and all these different types of things are adding a lot of depth to it. Look at that, some more advertisements. The fact that they've, here's another thing. The book itself, look at the pre presentation of the book with the barcode, the futuristic kind of barcode over here and these advertisements that are, look at the presentation of this book. I mean, this is a labor of love. They've, they've gone beyond just slapping art in a book and calling it a book. There's The book itself is, I mean, this is worth its weight in gold. This is gorgeous. Unification Wars. Now, this is where we start to get into some backstory, a little bit more backstory. And look at, again, attentions to details. You know what I love about this? It's a family. They're a little kind of like the future arms. There's mommy gun and daddy gun and grandpa gun and all that kind of. The kids have their little cute little starter, starter kit guns, so to speak. But she's got a little stretch mark because she's pregnant right so they included a little she's got a little mole a little stretch mark she's got little freckles he's got freckles you got them from mom you know you can see that where they got their features and all these little attentions to detail that you probably just skip over it and not even notice but they're there again he's got that scar i'm very curious where like why he's got a scar and why he doesn't this is where things get really cool because i love science i love i'm 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 you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a couch scientist in that sense. I'm always watching Star Talk or documentaries on different types of things. I'm fascinated with the science because to me, science and art really interconnect a lot. And knowing CD Projekt Red and how heavily the writers and the developers and the producers research things and develop things, I'm very curious how much existing science and personal experience they inject into their conceptualization of future tech. So let's check it out. It's a little quote. In this quote, I'm going to read it to you because it's very telling. Hello and hail the free net. Hail to the free net. Today we're going to talk about modern technology. Every single day corporations flood our senses with ads for must-have bleeding, bleeding edge merchandise while simultaneously stealing each other's ideas and blueprints, kidnapping opposing top researchers, assassinating rival executive producers, and blowing up competing labs just to be the first to market their own technological marvels. The, streets, the street has its own black market of creativity, of, of creatively modified equipment from cyberware to guns to net running devices to cars and aerodynes. The editor. What this is telling me is that what I can see, I can feel an underlying anger and rebelliousness in that comment in the sense that, um, well, this, I think this quote here says it best. Modern implants all have similar technological foundations because they need to be compatible with each other's nervous systems. 
The interfaces are all industrial standards, so there's no problem with compatibility between competing platforms from different manufacturers. You have an Araska made learning processor, but a chipware socket from Biodyne. No problem. Boy, does this resonate with me. I just built a PC. I just switched, as most people are, from an Intel to a Ryzen system, okay, to an AMD system. So what did I need to do? I needed to get an AMD motherboard. And I also got an ROG, it's an also an ROG motherboard. And then, well, I might as well get an ROG tower case because they're compatible. And I might very well, when the 3080 comes out, I might very well get the ROG, the Asus ROG 3080 because they all function together. And that's a marketing thing. Same reason all of my LED, all of my, my RGB fans and all of my peripherals are all Corsair because I'm heavily invested in the IQ system, right? Um, it's a way of keeping things proprietary. If you want things to work the way you want them to, you have to buy all of our stuff like Apple, right? And it says something about how much thought they put into the idea of future of cybernetics, of synthetic limbs and processors and all these different chips and parts that people use to enhance their abilities, which is a very big part of cyberpunk, right? And that this underground black market are developing it in a way that makes it um, that makes it cross compatible. It's anti corporation. It's you can buy any piece from anybody and your, your system's not gonna, not gonna blue screen because you got a chip from a different manufacturer. No, they're all cross compatible. They removed the restrictions on it, which pisses off marketing companies, right? But that's the whole point. And I like the fact that they're bringing modern day advertising and marketing philosophy or anti modern advertising and marketing philosophy into the, their underground sales team. Which if you think about it, we already have a very deep familiarity with this kind of culture in modern day society. It's all every everywhere you look, everything you buy is all based around some kind of a brand nowadays. And they're developing that into a game in a way that all I can say is yet again, testament to the freaking geniuses that work at CD Projekt Red. Mwah! Okay, that's all I gotta say. Now here, what it says here, real skin is a technology used for producing synthetic skin. This is really cool. Virtually indistinguishable from natural skin invented for the medical market and help war veterans accept their cyber prosthesis. It became more popular and affordable in the following 30 years uh, and is now the standard covering most implants. Fans of retro, st retro style and owners of expensive custom-made cyber limbs still prefer to quote, go naked and wear implants without real skin overlay. This is basically, it's showing how people have completely integrated into this cyber world. There's no bias against the cyber world to the point where people are, are also showing off the tech. The same reason like I have, an, I have a, you know, a, a glass case. So you can see all my fans and my processors and all that kind of shit. And you can have a seizure looking at all my RGB puke. It's showing off your tech, and, but that tech is you. So say, check it out. I just got a new, I just got a new implant for my extensor, you know, carpial naris, right? Check it out. Isn't that cool? And you can see how you, you get the ability to I don't know, shoot Spider-Man webs or something like that. But look at how they've integrated that into the design. And some people like fully implemented into it. And I would imagine the old fashioned folk, you know, the old folkies aren't that comfortable with it. Yeah, back in the day when we all had flesh and blood, right? I can see the future like that in a, in a very, interesting way I think it's I, because as gen, every generation passes you get more and more assimilated into this world of of technology every generation that follows always pushes the bar of comfort for the generation that preceded it and that's why grandma and grandpa still don't know what an internet is right and still think you have to use a mouse with your foot <laughs> I just watched a stand-up comedy skit where he's talking about that where for us, we all know what a computer is. I build my own PC. You think, in a, you think 30 years ago, anybody knew how to build a PC except for a computer engineer? No, now everybody does it, right? Now you get into a little bit more into guns and gun culture. And when you get into guns and gun culture, this is where it really makes it starts to feel, it feels starts to feel RPG, which I think is really cool because RPG is always about progression of your character, visual progression of your character. So I'm very curious how Cyberpunk is gonna be implementing this into the game, but in a futuristic sense. 
It's like a, uh, 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 an FPS futuristic MMORPG. And they're really embracing this. The CD Projekt Red really embrace game culture. They know where they're coming from and they know where they're going. And I'm v just the fact that they've implemented this and they're, they're showing you how there's this whole culture and subculture and subculture of weapon sales and weapon development and you get the really like high-end stuff logo design makes me think totally of of uh, blade runner 2049 stationary weapons which makes me think i don't know if they've mentioned it let me know in the comments below but have they implemented into the game kind of like bases where you kind of if you're part of a certain clan or something like that this makes me think a lot of vampire masquerade all the different clans and stuff like that where you kind of like set up base and you're protecting your base so maybe like you can develop your weaponry to protect your home base type of thing? Let me know. I'm not sure if they've actually spoken about that, but that's making me think of it. You can see how this guy over here is very heavily cyborg up. So he's definitely somebody who's kind of, every every major function of his body's all been replaced with tech. It's like, like the plastic surgery of the future. Now, this also makes me think of Blade Runner 2049. Futuristic vehicles. Remember one of the things I was mentioning if you've seen my, I recommend you go check it out. I was talking about one of the important things about when it comes to design. How you don't want to just create flashy, cool stuff. Most of what you see when you're walking down the street is the mundane. The, the commonplace stuff. The Passats and the Hondas and the Hyundais and all that kind of stuff. Cars that are not, they don't stick out. They're not Teslas. And this is their interpretation of futuristic cars. Now, this is... What's cool about this is that this is not a reflection of today. Cars don't look like this today. Cars look like this back in the 1960s and 70s and 80s. When I was a kid, these kinds of cars were driving the streets. And what they've done is they've taken retro car design, but futurized it. And what I thought was really cool here with regards to the hubcaps is that you can see the hubcap is very horizontal, which implies that this part doesn't spin which means that the wheels themselves kind of are like, it's kind of like my fans, my, my, my computer fans, that they're ML, magnetic loop, that they actually use magnetic magnets to keep it smooth and keep it from shaking. And it holds it in place using like negative, like opposing charged magnets. So maybe that's what's actually going on here, which would be pretty dope. I see dope a lot because I'm very stoked about this. I apologize. Yeah, like an old design, Thornton, perfect name, a Thornton pickup with ML wheels. Come on, that's pretty freaking cool. You can tell whoever, a lot of people who worked on this definitely have built computers before. I'm gonna end here because if I don't end here, this review is gonna end up lasting 16 years long because there's a ton. I have barely even scratched the surface of this book. I've only gone about one third into it, but you know what? If you want it, go buy it for yourself. I'll leave a link in the description where you can pick it up for yourself. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that, so I'm not making any profit. I just want you to support this magnificent team. And again, reiterate the fact, don't burn yourselves out, guys. I want to see you guys thrive and produce these masterpieces for many years to come. So if it takes you a decade to finish this game, then take a bloody decade. It's worth the wait. Look at Zelda Breath of the Wild. He took his sweet ass time releasing it and look at the master masterpiece that was created. So from me to you, from me to my Polish sweethearts who I love with all my heart, and everybody else who's worked on this game, you have managed in only a few quick titles, revolutionized, and have upped the standard of video games for everybody. I don't regret for two seconds building an entire PC to enjoy this masterpiece. It was worth every penny. Besides, I like building PCs. I think it's a lot of fun. So thank you for this. I'm probably going to be doing a follow-up review of this later on after I've had a chance to read up more on it and get to know, maybe even play it a little bit once it's released and stuff like that. But um, until then, thank you for joining me. I'm super stoked about this game and this whole project and take care.